Welcome to Value-Based Care, Volume to Value. This is Lecture B, Macra and Value-Based Payments. This lecture provides an introduction to Macra and Value-Based Payments, focusing on the changes in CMS payment models for value-based care. This lecture provides a review of U.S. legislation enacted through MACRA and specifically on how the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System incorporates several existing programs for reporting, measurement, and the meaningful use of certified electronic health records in order to support the move to value-based payment models. The objectives for this lecture are to describe alternative payment models, discuss the changes in the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, payment models toward value-based care incentive programs, discuss how electronic information and data can support organizational readiness for these alternative payment models, discuss how data acquired from electronic information systems can support alternative payment models. To support the shift to value-based care, new types of payment models have emerged. This lesson provides an overview of these current and emerging payment models. It then defines, explains, and examines Category 2 alternative payment models. These programs exert powerful influence on the way healthcare providers get paid and are a key element in the drive for value in healthcare in the U.S. These models are fraught with acronyms, to the point that one may feel that one is swimming in a sea of letters. This lecture helps to make sense of this soup by defining the programs, providing a narrative on the evolution of these healthcare payment models, and discussing what is required to sustain them. This lecture also discusses how health information technology, or health IT, can support these efforts to track and demonstrate value. The following premise serves as a foundation for this discussion. Nationally, through programs and strategy driven by the Department of Health and Human Services, or HHS, the healthcare industry is attempting to make a lasting shift from fee-for-service payment models to value-based payment models. These value-based models reward value and care coordination rather than volume and care duplication. To structure a framework with an overall goal of improving the quality of the healthcare system while helping to reduce the growth in healthcare costs, HHS divided characteristics of the payment plans into four categories as shown in this table. This lecture focuses on the models described as Category 2, where fee-for-service payments remain in place and there is an added payment element related to quality measures. For Category 2 payment models, how much a physician or hospital gets paid is not just based on the fee-for-service schedule, the negotiated payment for a specific activity, but in addition is also based on performance measured against quality standards. The Medicare Access and Children's Health Insurance Program, or CHIP Reauthorization Act, or MACRA, is the name of a piece of legislation that changed three elements of the Medicare payment model. First, the law ended the use of the Sustainable Growth Rate Formula. Second, MACRA created a new framework to reward health care providers for giving better, not more, care. Finally, MACRA authorized the combination of existing quality reporting programs into one new system. It is important to note that the focus of MACRA is on Medicare clinicians, and that many of the changes included in the MACRA proposed rule that was released by CMS in April 2016 do not directly impact hospitals and Medicaid providers. However, the rule does include some changes to the Meaningful Use Program that would impact hospitals and Medicaid providers. An examination of all three elements of the MACRA legislation follows. Since 1997, the Sustainable Growth Rate, or SGR, has proven to be an area of contention in the healthcare payment realm. When instituted, SGR was designed to make large cuts in the fee schedule for Medicare payments. However, this one requirement became a very contentious issue because the cost of care wasn't getting any cheaper. Many organizations that represented physicians, hospitals, and other health care providers heavily lobbied Congress to not implement these cuts. This continuous lobbying resulted in SGR cuts, with the exception of one year, never being implemented. This acrimonious atmosphere resulted in the inability to make the kind of radical reductions required by the SGR formula. By ending SGR, Congress eliminated a regulation that wasn't being implemented. 
The goals of SGR, of reducing the growth of the cost of care, were instead rolled into the MACRA legislation. Under MACRA, the plan for reducing health care costs takes a different approach. Instead of cutting costs across the board, MACRA implements two types of incentive payment programs aimed at reducing costs. The first is called Merit-Based Incentive System, or MIPS, and the other is called Alternative Payment Models, or APMs. This lecture covers the details and mechanisms of MIPS. To begin a discussion of MIPS, first recall the payment model framework reviewed earlier. In the HHS payment taxonomy, MIPS is classified under Category 2. This makes MIPS a payment model that is based on both the fee-for-service schedule and performance-measured quality standards. The first performance period for MIPS is scheduled for 2017, with the first payment adjustments and bonuses scheduled for 2019. The MACRA proposed rule that lays out all the details for implementation was released in April 2016 for a 60-day comment period. The final rule can be expected to be released later in 2016. The MACRA legislation combined payment programs that already existed and added new elements to them to create MIPS. These programs include the Physician Quality Reporting System, or PQRS, the Value-Based Modifier, or VBM, and the Medicare Electronic Health Records, or EHR, Incentive Program, often referred to as Meaningful Use. MIPS, as a single program, is designed to incent providers to take action based on quality, resource use, clinical practice improvement, and the meaningful use of certified EHR technology. Additionally, the value-based modifier is designed to create incentives for healthcare providers to control the cost of care. In MIPS, elements of the existing meaningful use of EHRs, PQRS, and the value-based modifier programs will work together to affect a provider's Medicare payments. Through this combination of programs, a payment model that includes fee-for-service with incentives is being created. Although healthcare providers need to start learning about the proposed rule, there may be additional changes made before the final rule is published, so it will be very important to stay informed. Increasing the impact of incentive programs is a strategy that CMS used in the past and is also implementing for the future through the MIPS payment structure. With MIPS, eligible clinicians, either as individuals or a group, receive a MIPS composite performance score based on four factors. These factors include quality, resource use, clinical practice improvement activities, and advancing care information. Advancing care information focuses on health information exchange, e-prescribing, electronic patient engagement, and other health IT-focused activities. This composite performance score determines the amount of adjustment to a provider's base rate of Medicare Part B payment. For 2019, CMS set the maximum amount of adjustment from MIPS to 4%. As the image on this slide shows, the percentage of the adjustment amount increases over time, reaching a maximum of 9% by 2022 in the proposed rule. At 9%, the penalties incurred can start to have significant impact. Thus, by 2022, CMS is expecting to see these MIPS payment incentive programs largely affect the way healthcare is both paid for and provided. However, to understand whether this goal is achievable requires a deeper examination of the programs combined under MACRA and MIPS. The next part of this lecture examines each of these pieces. To continue to explore the pieces of MIPS, a discussion of how the Physician Quality Reporting System, or PQRS, affects physicians is necessary. PQRS aims to affect ambulatory care, not care delivered through hospitals. It's a program that uses penalties, referred to as negative payment adjustments, to promote the reporting of quality information. PQRS affects those people who are classified as eligible professionals, or EPs, within the PQRS program. This term, with a few very minor exceptions, applies to everyone who bills Medicare and who writes prescriptions. There is some overlap between the PQRS and MU definitions of EP, but there are some PQRS EPs who are not MU EPs. Beginning in 2016, EPs automatically are penalized for not doing PQRS reporting. Starting in 2017, PQRS will merge into MIPS. 
Currently, all EPs must report on nine measures from at least three of the six National Quality Strategy, or NQS, domains. The PQRS measures consist of either process improvement measures or healthcare outcomes measures within these strategies. The six NQS domains include patient safety, effective clinical care, person and caregiver-centered experience and outcome, community and or population health, communication and care coordination, and efficiency and cost reduction. Each of these domains merits some further exploration. The strategy of patient safety focuses on making care safer by reducing harm caused in the delivery of care. The strategy of effective clinical care promotes the most effective prevention and treatment practices for the leading causes of mortality by measuring clinical care processes linked to outcomes based on evidence and practice guidelines. The quality measures for the strategy of person and caregiver-centered experience and outcome are designed to measure how a patient and her family members or authorized caregivers perceive the quality of care. For example, this domain includes measures of organizational structures or processes that foster the inclusion of persons and family members as active members of the healthcare team and collaborative partners with providers and provider organizations. The strategy of community and population health is a domain concerned with prevention. This strategy signifies the most radical shift with the fee-for-service payment model. Quality measures for this domain include the types of clinical and preventative services that were performed to improve the health of the overall population that the provider serves. The population health domain is one that requires healthcare providers to think about their job in a way that is very different from the fee-for-service business model, which provides little or no incentive to be concerned with prevention or overall health of a group of patients. The strategy of communication and care coordination concerns appropriate and timely receiving and sharing of information with patients and various caregivers. Finally, in the domain of efficiency and cost reduction are the quality measures that reflect efforts to lower costs, reduce errors, and significantly improve outcomes. These are measures of appropriate use of healthcare resources or inefficiencies in healthcare delivery. PQRS permits providers to submit reports that show the results of their efforts via a variety of mechanisms. These include Certified Electronic Health Record Technology, or CEHRT, allowing reporting directly from the EHR, Qualified PQRS Registry, Qualified Clinical Data Registry, or QCDR, and Medicare Part D claims submitted to CMS. Physicians, as one of the primary stakeholder groups to be affected by these changes, have been particularly troubled by these multiple reporting options. Their concerns stem not only from the need to pick an option, but depending on which measures they're reporting on, all of the measures can't be reported by all the reporting mechanisms. MU, through a staged implementation, provides incentives for EPs to adopt the technology required to ease this burden of reporting. At the outset, HHS and CMS recognized such adoption would require a phased implementation strategy. A timeline beginning in 2011 was stage one, and extending to 2021 was published. Based upon feedback received from various stakeholders, these bodies have adjusted the timeline and program requirements to better support the implementation of the program. The widespread adoption of CEHRT, stemming from the growing reliance on electronic reporting, also helps ease this burden of reporting and seeks to reconcile the problems of multiple reporting avenues. Increasingly, what is required to be measured are those pieces of data that come directly out of the certified electronic health record, rather than via extraction of records or analysis of billing information. This evolution in reporting increases accuracy and also provides faster feedback to the providers, who can see how they are performing against the measures by looking at their systems. Reporting is one concern stakeholders have regarding the ability to implement value-based payment models, including MIPS. 
Another area of consideration involves knowing enough about the measurement itself. This concern comes from the fact that what goes into developing the requirements for the measure can have a large effect on the way people are paid or the way health care is delivered. Thus, measure development is highly complex and can be politically charged. Careful consideration must be given to ensuring that the selected measurement does not include the wrong patient population, which could result in health care providers being penalized for something they shouldn't be doing anyway. For example, if a health care provider is measured against a process for appropriate colon cancer screening, patients within that provider's population who have had a complete colectomy should be excluded from the measure. Similarly, a measure of appropriate use of mammograms for breast cancer screening should not include women who have had bilateral mastectomies. A final concern that stakeholders often express includes a frustration from an unintended consequence of the focus on quality through measurement, which resulted in a mandate for measure harmonization. The need for measure harmonization was made clear early in 2016 by Donald Berwick, who said, Over the past 20 years, as the evidence grew about defects in care, there was a sense of alarm. As a result, we began a festival of measurement, an almost measurement mania. Now, the number of metrics exceeds the ability of any reasonable human being to consume usefully. There's been insufficient diligence about the alignment and harmonization of measures. The measurement mania concern resulted in CMS working to harmonize the measures by working together with representatives of major commercial health plans, physician groups, and other stakeholders. CMS and the National Quality Forum arrived at a consensus of core measurement sets designed to improve quality and make physician reporting easier. The guiding principles of this measurement set, namely that they be meaningful, reduce variability, ease the burden of collection, and reduce cost, serve to establish broad agreement for measurement sets. As a result of all of these stakeholder concerns, the implementation timeline, burdens of reporting, and measurement mania, beginning in 2016, CMS announced dramatic changes to the MU program. In a joint CMS blog post published in January 2016, CMS Acting Administrator Andy Slavitt and HHS Acting Assistant Secretary Karen DeSalvo outlined criteria for transitioning from measuring clicks to focusing on care. As a way to capitalize on the opportunity provided through MACRA to implement the meaningful use of CEHRT in ways that facilitate rather than hinder the goals of value-based care. These criteria include rewards for patient outcomes achieved through technology, customization of health IT to individual practices while remaining user-centered and supportive of physicians, promotion of innovation and allowance for connectivity through using open APIs to unlock electronic health information, prioritization of interoperability through federal standards, However, what actually results from ongoing rule changes is unknown. While MACRA allows for the adjustment of EHR incentives, it does not remove the requirement. It is also important to note that MACRA only applies to Medicare EPs. Medicare hospital programs, as well as Medicaid programs, are not yet affected. Moving forward from 2016, the importance of CEHRT and the effective and proper use of EHR systems continue to develop, expand, and contribute to the tracking of health information, outcomes, and the cost of care. High-quality certified electronic systems that are used to measure and report on quality in a carefully defined and consistent way are an essential underpinning of the effort to move from volume to value. While outcomes are yet unknown, one clear path forward involves better and consistent adoption of health IT among providers and within healthcare organizations. The criteria outlined by Slavit and DeSalvo wholly support the use of health IT through customization, connectivity, and interoperability. For EPs and other health organizations to be ready and able to successfully implement alternative payment models such as MIPS, the need for electronic health information is paramount. Health IT facilitates both the collection and reporting of the data required for successful performance in APMs.
One example is EHRs that use preloaded electronic quality measures. These systems can now calculate complex reporting factors and patient population exclusions. For instance, electronic health record technology can accurately measure how many women should receive a mammogram by excluding women who've had bilateral mastectomies and those who recently had a mammogram. Thus, the physician or another staff member orders the test only for the women who need them. Without certified electronic record technology, it's almost impossible to keep track of all the requirements and exclusions. To finalize a discussion of the legislation that supports MIPS, the impact of the value-based modifier, or VBM, must be addressed. This is where all the requirements and measures start to come together and have a direct impact on the way the provider gets paid. VBM was authorized in the Patient and Provider Affordable Care Act, or PPACA, or ACA for short. The modifier helps to assess value on both the quality of care and the cost of care under the Medicare Physician Fee Schedule, using cost measures, quality measures, and PQRS measures. EPs are phased into the program based upon the size of their group. In 2015, this affected relatively few physicians who worked in large practices. In 2017, the value-based purchasing, or VBP, program would have been completely phased in. However, that will now be part of MIPS. Instead of VBM being a separate program, elements will be part of the MIPS Composite Performance Score to determine over time who will be penalized and who will be rewarded. Currently, the way the physician's penalty or incentive report is calculated is based on something called the Quality Reporting and Utilization Reports, or QRUR. These reports are sent to providers to show their performance against VBM measures. These reports help providers see performance and how CMS is looking at value and PQRS data. The next slides provide some examples. This report sample shows that each EP has a composite quality score right at the top of the report. The composite score is developed through a series of calculations and takes into account all of the quality measures the EP reported. These calculations make sure the composite score works and takes into account the population of patients with whom the provider works. The EP also gets an average range for this quality composite score, which compares their performance to other EPs. Next, CMS calculates a cost composite score. This calculation has the goal of ensuring that the health status and past cost of care for the EP's patients are taken into account. The result is a cost composite score that compares the EP to other providers. Finally, the EP is ranked on a four-quadrant graph, where the upper left corner is low quality and low cost, and the bottom right is high quality and high cost. The quadrant the provider wants to avoid is the bottom left, which shows low quality at a comparative high cost. Alternatively, the desired quadrant is the upper right, high quality and low cost. This is the behavior that CMS wants to encourage. Providers in that quadrant are the ones who would receive incentives. It's also the way that EPs can demonstrate that they are providing high value. The final elements of the QRUR report tell the EP whether they receive a penalty or an incentive payment. These currently range from a 1% penalty to an incentive of twice the adjusted fee schedule, but will become part of MIPS. Although much of the discussion in this lecture has centered on physicians' office payment systems for Medicare patients, CMS has similar programs for hospitals. One of these is a program where hospitals are penalized for 30-day readmissions for the same procedures. The goal is to prevent patients who have been discharged from being readmitted for the same reason. While this may seem like an obvious quality measure, it's important to remember that under fee-for-service, health care providers were paid whether or not the patient got well. In 2016, CMS intends to measure 30-day readmission numbers for patients admitted to the hospital for heart attacks, pneumonia, COPD, and hip replacements, will result in up to a 3% reduction in total payments. 
such penalties have begun to affect the way hospitals budget their costs and review their results. Specifically, hospitals initiated changes to make sure that patients are healthy before discharging them, and that the discharge nurse gives patients good instructions for remaining healthy once they leave the hospital. There are several studies that have shown the positive effect of this program. Facilities with too high a readmission rate saw their Medicare payments docked up to 1 percent in fiscal 2013. The financial implications of this program are resulting in some pushback. Modern Healthcare reports that the Hospital Readmission Reduction Program has faced increasing criticism by health policy researchers and industry groups representing U.S. hospitals. They argue that many factors affecting whether a patient needs to be readmitted are beyond a hospital's control. In particular, facilities in poor communities may be unfairly penalized, some of the program's critics say. For the 2015 fiscal year, only 799 of the more than 3,400 hospitals subject to the Hospital Readmissions Reduction Program performed well enough on the CMS's 30-day readmission program to face no penalty. 38 hospitals were penalized at the maximum 3 percent reduction, according to a modern healthcare analysis of the CMS data. In addition to programs for physicians and hospitals, CMS is advancing the concepts of value-based purchasing into home health. In November of 2015, CMS completed the final rule for an initiative called Value-Based Home Health Agencies, or HHAs. The program is slated to run as a six-year test in the following states, Arizona, Florida, Iowa, Maryland, Massachusetts, Nebraska, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Washington. The goals of the program are to provide incentives to Medicare HHAs to provide higher quality and more efficient care. Similar to MIPS, these home health agencies will be scored on a series of measures and compared to each other. The specifics of the home health value-based purchasing model include 21 quality measures based on an established home health quality measurement set, known as OASIS, consumer satisfaction measures, and others. The program is designed to test whether a payment incentive of up to 8 percent can significantly improve provider performance. This lecture discussed the programs that CMS has developed to support Category 2, value-based payment models. VBM programs affect the value of care in the U.S. by replacing fee-for-service models, which lack methods to incentivize high-value care. CMS and many other insurance payers developed programs like PQRS and the VBM to increase the focus on quality and reward positive behavior. Or, to put it plainly, providers who report low-cost, high-quality results receive payment increases. Those who report high-cost, low-quality care receive penalties. The belief is that over time, this move away from fee-for-service to payment programs like MIPS and Category 3 and 4 alternative payment models will have a positive effect. This concludes Lecture B, Volume to Value. In summary, MACRA legislation and CMS have worked to create the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, or MIPS, to promote the move from volume to value. PQRS and VBM programs currently focus on measurement through reporting. These programs, along with meaningful use, are being rolled into MIPS. Selecting appropriate measures and making sure proper exclusions are made assures the validity of the data. QRUR reports provide a review of physician results for patient populations. Health IT tools, and in particular, Certified EHR Technology, or CERHT, provides ways to develop and expand the use of electronic reporting to help ease the burden on providers. Individual physicians and group providers, hospitals, and home health are all operating under value-based payment models. The results of these efforts contribute to showing an increase in the value of care delivery.